some previews of what I'm going to try to fix. Lots of dirt that can get cleaned off this cover. Some creases that can get smoothed out. Backs where a lot of uh, improvement can be made. Unfortunately, that you can't really do anything about. But look at all this other stuff. Clean this up. I don't know what that is. That corner can be fixed. All of that can be smoothed out. Lots of dirt to be cleaned. Hopefully, the staples are intact. This won't give me a heart attack. And then we got a whole bend over here, crease bend that can be addressed. So here's a little before. We'll see how it develops. Okay, we have a special one for you guys today. This is probably my biggest uh, crack clean and press project to date. And I got excited when I saw this book because uh, number one, it's one I've had my eye on for a while. It's also kind of rising in popularity again because of the upcoming Disney Plus uh, Loki series coming out. So this is Journey into Mystery 85, the first appearance of Loki, uh, third appearance of Thor. And I, this one came up recently on auction and was lucky enough to win it. And I uh, picked it out for a number of reasons you'll see. And, and I'll give a, a bunch of overview of kind of how I, I scan these books and look for candidates for cracking and pressing. But one of the first things that jumped out, you can tell by the old label that this was graded a while ago. And while it's not a definitive yes or no, uh, books that were graded a back, I think, when, when was this? probably 10 years ago or so, um, were less likely to have been cleaned and pressed. Cleaning and pressing is probably a, a more recent uh, prevalence than some of the, the older, than it was uh, you know, back in the day, so to speak. But we can take a look at this. And I, I saw this label, uh, I saw it was the old case. So I could also see just from the initial pictures that it was uh, pretty dirty from the front cover. And then there were a lot of pictures with the book, which were really great. Uh, so that you can kind of evaluate the, the book in general, you know, the can, overall condition. But you can see there's uh, some light creasing uh, with color breaks to, to the cover. We can't necessarily remove those, but there's also a lot of soiling that we can, uh, we can try to address in there. So a, a number, uh, a, a large amount of cleaning that can go into this book on the front cover. One of the things that I also noticed was there, there is a, a lot of spine stress here. One of the things I know I'm going to have to be cautious of is uh, this lower staple uh, right here. I want to make sure that that stays intact and that's going to be really important when we build our stack for, for pressing because I don't want to detach that staple from the book and end up with a, a lower grade than I could have if I was a little more cautious. So one of the things when we get this open, we're going to evaluate that staple. We're going to evaluate the internal staples and then I'll flip this over in a second. You can see the back, but in general, just spinning it around. You know, we're not going to be able to remove these creases because they're color breaking, but I can already see from here that there's a, a number of bends in there that can be improved. And so I know, you know, just from the front cover that this book has not been pressed before because I can see the bends in there. If we look at the back, it's, it's more of the same. Uh, there's a lot of uh, soiling on here. Uh, if you go around like this, we can't address. So this is a, a large stain uh, or tanning in the center. That, that I don't think can be fixed. I'm gonna see what necessarily that is when we get this open. But we can see all the way up and down the cover over here, we have a, a lot of stuff that can be cleaned. And then a couple impact dents right here. I'm not quite sure what made those, but those look like a couple of impacts. That might take some spot work to address, but we'll, uh, we'll do our best to, to kind of uh, get those away. And then also right here, not, not sure what that is either. Uh, some type of staining on there. I'm going to try to do my best on there. But we can see that for the large amount, the, the book is in pretty good condition uh, for the age. And then, of course, here, another telltale sign that it hasn't been pressed. There's a, a little bit of a, a tear and a, a chip that's bended back. And then this right here, uh, you can see this, this bend and crease that 
will probably couple take a few rounds to get uh, get out, but uh, we're going to be able to, to improve this considerably. So, like I said, uh, biggest book that I've done to date. So definitely some uh, some anxiety with uh, getting this open. But uh, I think my the words of wisdom in the community are, are treat every book like it's a four dollar book. And that way you won't make any silly mistakes because you're trying to be too cautious. You know, if you've ever hold up some of those old sayings like walking with a glass of water, you don't want to be staring at that glass and thinking about spilling it. You're going to end up with spilling it. Just do your best. Walk on your way. And uh, hopefully everything goes as planned. So without further ado, I'm going to get into this book. Uh, we're going to crack it open. Uh, I had a comment last time that somebody wanted to see that process in more detail. Uh, and one of the reasons that I usually do it offline is because I, uh, with the newer cases that are a little stronger uh, put together, a little firmer, uh, you can see this one here is almost separating like that. It's going to be really easy to get into this one, knock on wood. But in the in, with the, the easiest way that I do it, which is kind of silly, is I, I go in the garage, I sit Indian style, and I put the book between my feet to hold it in place. I have a vice out there, but I'm worried that any kind of uh, pressure may uh, be too much and end up cracking the, the case and then hurting the, the book inside. So the easiest thing I found, I just sit Indian style, I put it between my feet, I hold it in place while I put the chisel in place, and that way it frees up both of my hands. I can use a, a small hammer to crack, to get into these crevices and, and crack the book out. And it makes it a lot easier uh, when you have both hands free. And since that seems just kind of odd, you know, me sitting in the inside of the garage, not really what you imagine when you're, you have a book of this value. Uh, so I do that off camera, but for this one, because it's an older case, I'm gonna get into this. So I, I like to use a chisel for this. I have a set and basically I found this crease here and this one's gonna be relatively simple. I'm just gonna get in here and kind of work the case and uh, just pro basically gently pry it so that the case uh, splits. I'm going to follow it around a, a little bit. And I can probably get it out now, but just to make it a little simpler, I'm going to keep, keep going a little bit. We'll go down this way. Boop! And that's pretty much it. So let's slide this guy out. And there you go. See? Easy as that. And you can see this one was in desperate need of a new case. Like this one is scuffed. It has, I don't know what that is. It's really interesting because I think that's on the inside of the case. Look at this. I'm not sure what the deal was with this, with these older cases, but that looks like, I don't know. That looks like imperfection. Oh no. Yeah, that looks like it's on the inside of the case. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that. All right, and I'm going to take this guy out and I'm going to save these. I always keep these as kind of my uh, my trophies. So uh, we'll, we'll set this aside 4.0 uh, off white to white pages and we'll uh, we'll see the reveal when this one hopefully comes back a, a higher grade. So I'm going to set that aside and then I am going to, like I said, get right into this, get this guy out of the out of the case, I have a fresh blade on my X-Acto knife and I'm going to find the edge over here and I'm going to go straight down that edge. And I always do this with a fresh blade because it is a lot easier. Uh, you know, a sharp knife is a safe knife, as they, as they say. So the, the sharper that your blade you're using, the easier that it's going to cut through this and the less chance of you making a, a mistake. I also do this part without gloves. So the, the glove part that I transition to is kind of the, when I finally get it out and I want to handle it, I, uh, I go ahead and put on the gloves. Let's see. That may be above the seam, but we'll see. If so, I can go a little, I can go a little closer to the book. Yeah, it was a little, little too close to the to the seam. So I'm 
Okay, so that side is out. Man, that is dirty, but it's a beautiful book. I'm like, you know, you, you see, you see the book and you're like, oh, this is so gorgeous. And then uh, you see how much dirt and soiling is on it. And you're like, man, it's just, uh, I mean, I don't know how long CCS has been around, but there's definitely been third party pressers and cleaners that have been around a long, long time. It's not a new, uh, a new hobby by any means or a new part of the hobby. But uh, like this is a book just like, why would you get graded without having it at least pressed beforehand? It's always been, you know, first appearance of Loki, for at least the history of the MCU has been a, a popular, a popular event. Okay. Thanks for joining me again for these projects. I try to make them exciting and interesting and learn a little bit along the way. Uh, so. I, uh, I'm excited to have you guys here. All right, so for this next part, now that I've got that aside, uh, I am going to put my gloves on and then get this guy out of the case. We'll talk about the cleaning tools I have available. This guy is done, so he gets to be capped and, and put away off to the side. so <laughs> No accidents will happen. Uh, and then I'll go over kind of the, the things that I'm gonna use to clean this up. So let's get this guy out, put my gloves on. All right, so I have a magazine size backup board right here. That's going to be the placemat, so to speak, for the book. I'm going to open this up. Gently get a hold of it and just slide it out there. All right, so there's the internal casing. And then now we have the book out and I can get a, uh, a closer look on it. So yeah, I'm going to pause the video in a, in a couple minutes to take some pictures of this. But I can tell just looking from the side and seeing the light catch it that it has uh, it has a lot of bends in it. There's a lot of bends in the cover that can be addressed. Uh, the major things that are issues with this book. So let's kind of go over those real quick. So we have color breaking creases right here. We have what looks like a, a chip right here out of the side of the page. General edge wear. So this is you know edge wear to around the book. Um, we have light. Uh, soiling to the cover. There's also uh, un those dents that I saw on the other side. Bends to the cover. There's some bends right here. And then we have uh, spine wear <clears throat> with a number of color breaking spine ticks. Uh, we have, I think that the staples look pretty good. Like I said, we're going to open it up. Right here, there's just a mess. There's a, a bunch of bends. Uh, that are in this cover that hopefully we'll be able to address. And then we have this, this, which let's see. Okay, so that is a tear or like on the verge of being a tear. So we have to be very cautious of this right here. So that little tear in the cover. And look, it looks like that, that crease goes through the cover. All right, so this is one thing I wanna look at. So we're gonna open this up. This staple looks pretty good, but I'm gonna be really cautious about that moving forward. Um, and then let's take a look at uh, at the back. So I'm going to put my other back board on top. I'm going to do the safe flip. I don't have to pick anything up. I'm going to take a look at the back. So again, I don't even know. That feels like some kind of debris on there. Or even it almost looks like a burn, but that's just bizarre. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do about that. Those dents that I talked about, this little uh, quarter inch plus tear, the little tear up there. And this staple and back look pretty good too. There's also a tear right here. So have to be very careful with this, uh, with this back cover. All right. So uh, again, with this, just lots of soiling and everything to it. That, a lot of dirt that can be cleaned up. And then that guy, so bizarre. I'll try something real quick, just out of curiosity. Oh yeah, look. I don't know what that was. That came off. Huh. <laughs> well, you uh, you never know. So yeah, I just like lightly, I, I kind of use this sometimes, a little pen cap as my uh, my scraper. 
just scrape that off and it came off. So already, already making improvements. That looks a lot nicer without that whatever it was right there. All right, let's flip this back over. And uh, I'm going to, you guys wanna see the inside of the book? So might as well enjoy it. I mean, everybody says, you know, once you have it uh, in the case, you don't get to, you don't get to see it. So let's, uh, let's flip through this thing. I'm gonna actually, what I'm gonna do, how about this? I have a couple of things I could prop it up with. I'm gonna prop it up. I have a couple books right here. These are in queue to get pressed. <laughs> so I'm gonna use those to kind of raise the level over here, just so this, uh, this book doesn't bend as much, or the, the front cover doesn't bend as much. Got that little shelf right there. Let's go through this. Dude, how great is that? How great is that? Oh yeah, so we can take this out. This is uh, microchamber MIP paper. I forget what it's uh, specifically called. Yeah, microchamber paper. And that is to preserve the to book. So this is really cool. I mean, I know, uh, you know, these days you can read a lot of books online, but it just, uh, it, it, there's something special about having, what, a 60-year-old book in your hands? That, that's so kind of like epic in terms of uh, the, the history of these characters. Well, this way we'll just to see the... See the centerfold and see how the staples are doing there. It's so amazing because I wonder what you know, the first time these characters were seen. You know, I I wasn't. It's a lot old book is a lot older than me. I just wonder, you know, the kid picking this off the rack, what they were thinking when they were reading it, what they thought of Thor and what they thought of Loki, and if that like made them be interested in Norse history and maybe go to the library, you know, before before Google or Wikipedia and and look up uh, about these characters. Very cool. All right, we got this other upper chamber paper right here. Take that out. It's a good looking book. Okay, so right now I'm gonna pause the video because I wanna take some uh, photos of it. And then I'm going to uh, come back and we're gonna get into uh, cleaning this. Okay, we are back. So I snapped some good photos of this guy so we can have some nice befores or after and afters and I'm gonna get started on it. So the things I wanna be cautious of of all these areas where there might be little tears and stuff. So we're gonna to have to work really cautiously about, about that. Uh, I honestly am gonna start on the back cover so that I can uh, get a little warmed up, so to speak. Just getting settled in to knowing the book and, and uh, uh, there's a lot of work to be done on this side, but again, we have to be careful of this stuff, this stuff. Anytime we're around those areas, we want to go in the opposite direction. 
Now let's talk about the tools that we're going to be using. Just this uh, polymer white tip eraser, this absorbing pad, which also comes in a putty, but I prefer the pad just from uh, experience. These, uh, these um, uh, Swifter cloths that are really helpful for cleaning the book. Uh, this one, which is a really nice new addition, this Mono Zero uh, elastomer eraser that I used for uh, around uh, either newsstand labels or any other white, white areas that are hard to get into with this larger eraser and more recent modern. So uh, the you know, 80s to 2005 books, I think these are really helpful for. And then this uh, Melamine Magic Eraser, which I won't use because it's basically uh, like sandpaper. And I, I reserve this for those uh, moderns as well. Uh, I may use this in a couple spots. We'll, we'll see how, how you know, things play out. But I started out uh, saying that, you know, all of these things you can buy in my starter kit for cleaning that I sell on eBay and on Instagram. So if you're interested in, in learning how to clean books and, and getting into pressing, uh, I recommend checking that out. The reason I put those books together is, or put those starter kits together is because I, I calculated out that it would take most people about 40 plus dollars to, to get into just trying out with buying all this stuff. Uh, and so I wanted to put something together so that people that were getting into it could get all these things in, in one shot and save themselves some cash. And then if they tried it out and liked it, they could stick with it and maybe buy things in bulk or they could continue to buy the kits if it's just easier to have all that stuff in one place. So I started uh, cleaning just this edge right here just to show everybody the difference. And I, uh, I did that using the, this eraser and the absorbing pad. I first gave the book a, a general wipe down with uh, that, uh, that Swifter pad. And I'll just show you right now, you can see the, the difference. So I stopped right about here. And so this is cleaned area right here, and this is uncleaned right here. And so you can see, hopefully see that, that, uh, that dirt and everything right there, and then on that side. And so just that little edge right there. And so I'll go ahead and continue doing this side over here. And then uh, I'll probably uh, do the rest of the book and, and the back cover and speed it up a little bit so that you guys don't have to sit through this, uh, this whole thing. So magazine backer board, uh, protecting the lettering right there. And just with very light pressure using the, the eraser, I'm going to continue going down the rest of the edge of this, this book. And a couple of the things that I said, you know, I think my, my focus on this book or my mantra on this book is going to be uh, less is more. So with these older books, you know, there's an expectation that there's some general soiling on them. So I, I'm not going to go crazy trying to get out every little bit. Basically, I just want to make it present better. And I want to make it, uh, of course, get a higher grade. But the, the cleaning and just looking, you know, presenting better, looking better is, is a big uh, added benefit to, uh, to this process. Uh, minus the, the potential grade increase. Of course, you know, as, as uh, this is probably an investment book for me, that is uh, one of the major uh, goals is to get a, a grade bump by uh, taking this book and cleaning it and pressing it. Uh, and I think I'll be able to do that. But the, the big thing is, is that you're able to make the book look better. So I always joke that it's kind of like the Schrodinger's comic book where this, this book is basically, you know, it was a 4.0 when I cracked it out and it's probably going to be, I would hope, at least a five, but maybe in the fives when I resubmit it. So you have a, a comic book, which at the same moment exists as both a 4.0 and a, a potential 5.5. Five. So there's some quantum state of, of comics. Uh, so that, that uh, always kind of interests me. You know, basically you're buying a book, you buy it for the grade. And if you bought this one for the grade, would you pay the same price, you know, for a higher, you basically are paying, if this goes back on the market as a 5.5, five, somebody's going to pay a higher price for the same book at, at a higher grade, but the whole time it was the same comic, you know. So uh, it, that, that aspect has always interested me in, in just thinking about the theory behind uh, our collecting. And, you know, you'll hear people debate about 9.8s, you know, what is a 9.8, why does it really matter? Anything above a 9.0 is basically a, a mint book with, uh, with very little defects. So why is everybody chasing the 9.8? Uh, of course, from an investment perspective, you can easily find counterpoints to that, at least from my, my perspective or my thoughts. You can have counterpoints of why the 9.8 is, is more important. And a lot of that is just from growth. So if you're doing this as, as both uh, enjoying the, the collecting process as well as uh, the investment side. So uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, I try to make my collecting as uh, a net neutral as possible. 
And a lot of the, the, why I got into pressing and cleaning is because of, uh, of that uh, aspect. So by uh, cleaning these books, I can get bras, I can fix them up and go for the 9-8 myself, uh, like I did with uh, Amazing Spider-Man 361, Amazing Spider-Man 316. I wanted 9-8s in those books. I really didn't want to pay 9-8 prices. And so I uh, found a bunch of raws in the wild and were able to clean and press them and, and get the 9-8s that, that I wanted and didn't want to spend money on. So if you're able to do that and then do it for multiple copies, then you have an investment aspect as well where you can uh, eventually maybe sell one of the copies and then uh, end up with a, a net neutral investment or maybe a little profit uh, to, to kind of fund your, your hobby. So, you know, the best kind of hobbies are the ones that, that make you money. Uh, a saying that I like. But uh, so we'll go back, you know, back to the book. I have lightly gone over these areas with, uh, with the eraser on these edges, being careful of where the staple is. Every once in a while, you want to clean your eraser too. Either use your, you can use your gloved hand or you can use the back of one of these, melt, these absorbing pads to, to clean it up. And so I've gone, you know, gone over this a couple times. I'm being very cautious of this uh, spine wear right there. I don't want to make that spine wear worse, so I'm avoiding that side. Then I'm going to come over, just wash those uh, little eraser pieces away, get my absorbing pad and go over that same area very gently. Again, I think this tool is really good for uh, the areas that are uh, very delicate, like the, the areas right here where you see a lot, a lot of uh, spine wear. So that way you just use minimal pressure. Yeah, I'm just you know, pausing to take a look at it. And again, less is more, so I'm gonna probably you know, stop. And just to, to test it out, we'll test a little section of this, just to see. Maybe I'll just give it a couple passes. Get to the last little bit. There's a little bit around the staple, but I'm very, very uh, hesitant to go at it any anymore. Okay, I'm wipe this away, clean this up, and show you guys that that uh, amount of cleaning. So let's see if you can see the difference right there. Hopefully you can see the difference. <laughs> I, I can tell it's a lot different. And we did a pretty good job of uh, avoiding any damage to, the, to that spine. All right, so let's see. Let's go this side next. And you can see this square right there needs a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the edges first, and then I'm going to... Uh, go in and, and continue to do that and go into the center. This book is going to lot, take a lot of time. And I don't, don't want to rush it at all. Okay, so I've talked, I've said this before, when you get to these edges, only in one direction. And I see some another spot right there, so I'm going to try to scrape that off. See if I don't know what that was. It's so crazy. It feels it, it feels like a splinter. Like the page has a splinter. It doesn't go through. That part, that, that is good news, but still. All right, we'll see what happens when we keep.
Might have to get a different tool for that. Let's cap this pen. <laughs> Definitely don't want un uncapped pens lying around. I can go a little faster on uh, on this side right here just because it's uh, there's no tears or marks or anything and I don't have that same edge wear that I did on the on the side on the spine all right so I'm going to come back again absorbing pad I get that off it's so bizarre Sorry, I'm so perplexed by that. I just don't, don't understand what it is. You never know, man. A lot of people, a lot of these books have like chocolate milk and candy and you know chocolate just like dripped onto them because you know, kids were just pulling them off the racks and you know, going out, going home after school and reading them and eating their after school snack. Now they're not uh, watching YouTube or whatever like uh, like our kids these days do. So. Who knows what you what you get spilled on them? All right, I'm gonna again with the, with the magic eraser just go very lightly on this area, especially on this side because I can't really having trouble with that. Okay, and I'm not going anymore with that. Just want to give it a couple wipes. Now that you can tell night and day. Look at that difference right there. All right, now one of the most dangerous edges, so to speak, this one. So I have a tear right there. And I have those dents and I want to be very cautious. I'm going to put more pressure down with this hand because I don't want uh, the paper to lift or to come loose at all. I want it to be held really securely in place. I'm just gonna skip over that and try it entirely right now. So the direction to do that guy in is maybe to pull it toward you. don't want to catch the sides. I'm going to put my finger on that tear Make sure I don't pull the paper and accidentally, accidentally tear it. Now I'm away. Same thing on the edges. When we get over to the edges, the corners, I mean, uh, we want to make sure that just go one direction. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick right here. So with these older books, you'll get that page to kind of like uh, bend in a little bit at the edge. It makes it really hard to clean. So I'm just going to take this, this uh, backer board. I'm not going to put it all the way to the edge. Putting it kind of right there. And then I'm going to put this on top of it. And you'll see that that really, 
that gives it extra support. So now we can address those, those edges, but do so very, very delicately. All right, you see, I almost made a mistake right there. And I forgot that tear was there. So I forgot that guy. That guy was barely visible. There's a tear right there too. comics let me know below if so you know what uh, what air do you usually focus on do you do it uh, mostly for just yourself collecting or do you do it uh, as a potential business model or just to make some extra money at the side for me it, it allows me to get into some of these older books at a lower uh, bottom line price you know and then Clean them, press them, end up with a grade that I probably couldn't have afforded myself. And if it's something that I think is, uh, you know, a spec book, so to speak, that I, um, let's find that tear. Yep, that tear is right there. So I'm going to cover that tear. That way it protects that corner. So if it's a spec book that I, I know is going to peak, but I really like it for myself, you know, uh, one of those, you know, I knew ASM 361 was going to pop and I love the cover of 316. I thought that was going to follow. So um, I'll, I'll get multiple copies or I'll try to get bras and have them graded out and try to get one for myself. And then when when it does go up, I'll you know, sell sell one of the other copies. Then I have one for myself. And hopefully that was uh, either no overall investment or, you know, overall cost for me aside from my time or uh, it'll be maybe a slight pro uh, profit. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this out. We're gonna get going on the rest of this book. And I, I think I have, the biggest thing you wanna worry about now, I don't wanna slide this, as I'm moving this board around, I don't wanna slide it and catch one of those tears. So I'm gonna be cautious about that. But this is the area I'm gonna, looks like a good place to start. I'm gonna do all the white first. So I'll go through and, and see if I can clean up all these uh, white areas best I can. And then I'll go back with the absorbing pads. So here, you guys wanna see, this would be maybe some place that we could work right there. I, don't, I want to avoid the color area, but I want to clean that white space that's between the lettering. So I can use this, uh, this eraser to do that. These, these areas are a little easier because I can use the edge of the eraser to kind of get in that spot.
Okay, now that I've gone over everything, uh, the first pass with uh, the eraser, I am going to use this uh, absorbing pad to go over the, the rest of the book, little by little. I'm just making short, short motions like that. Again, being cautious that I have good pressure here. So we're gonna see, we're gonna start out right here with a, a clean pad. You can kind of see what happens as we uh, go along over here. I'm going, making strokes that are toward me and just in a, in a single direction. And so most of the dirt and other soiling that was on the, the white areas or the areas without text or imagery on it uh, should be relatively well removed. And so that way I can be very, I can be, um, a little more conservative with uh, this absorbing pad and that way I don't uh, accidentally take off uh, a lot of ink or something trying to scrub away dirt or, from from above the text. So I'm going to uh, go on this very light and I'm going to be very cautious of what's happening to the, at least cognizant of what's happening to the page as I'm cleaning it. I'm going to look at those black text areas and make sure that I'm not dulling those out more than needs to be. So it's already starting to get a lot. And uh, some of that, I mean, the most of that is dirt because there's tons of dirt on this book. Some of that may be the top layer ink. That's why I'm going very light. One of the things that I don't use a lot of, I, I did when I started out, but I, I changed after I swapped to, to these pads, but I used to use those drafting erasers and first of all, they just made a mess. And I had the, uh, you know, I used them primarily for the surrounding areas, but I also used them for uh, the covers, you know, the, the front back covers. And that just like, that took way too much ink off. It, it was really easy to, to overdo it with that and just take a bunch of ink with it. And so the whole purpose of doing the surround first is so that that's the very delicate area. Like you don't want to use these types of tools or something because they kind of grab the page a little bit. You don't want to use them near the edges without having a, a lot of surrounding support. This is that area with that tanning or staining. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's really weird to me that it's uh, very localized. Here's that tear. You can see all of that.
went ahead and cut off the edge of that to give myself a fresh surface to work with. There's a lot of dirt that was coming off this book. So I always give a little extra focus to these white areas because it's the first place your eye goes to to kind of check the cleanliness of the book. You'll find one of those large white spaces and see how it looks. And if there's soiling on it, then you know the book is generally soiled. So I feel like uh, that's a good place to, to really focus if that's uh, where a lot of people are taking their impression of, of the cleanliness of the book or the, the quality of how these pages show. Because that's where I look. I look, uh, you know, if I'm looking to buy a book and see if it needs cleaning, I'll look to those white areas and I can immediately tell if the book has been cleaned or not. And definitely from these, you know, you, you saw the before pictures, you know this guy has not been cleaned. <laughs> Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to wipe this down, give it a, a little bit of a wipe, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of an assessment to see what areas need to be cleaned more, and I'm gonna go back with this guy. Because I can see there's some areas uh, in between the text that need to be cleaned, and I really don't wanna get in there with uh, too much rubbing. That's what's really great about this tool. So this is uh, actually one that I saw. Uh, I'm a member, as I've linked before, to the Captain Mike's uh, comic book cleaning and pressing Facebook page. And the author, or the, the moderator, creator of that page is the one that wrote the, the CPR handbook for how to clean and press comics. Michael Sorensen, I believe that's how you pronounce the last name. And it's a really great page. It's really well moderated, uh, very active, lots of people asking questions. A really good fact that a lot of people read and a lot of people don't read. So you know, thank you. Be, be one of the ones that reads the facts so you're not asking the same question a million times, which the, the first question that's usually asked is, what, uh, what press should I buy? And it, you know, it's one of those things that's just been like, it's been answered a million times. And so there's an entire guide on, on his like website that he has, as well as on the, the, pack, the page and the fact, uh, if you didn't even use the, the search function, you could find the, the answers to it. But uh, there's a, some recommendations for clamshell presses that a lot of the members use. So it's well supported if you have any kind of technical issues or are wondering what's said wondering about settings and stuff. Uh, and that's a Tusi, I believe, a T-U-S-E, or S-Y, sorry. Uh, and that's a, a good introductory beginner press, one that you can use for a long time. 
and uh, one that, again, a lot of people use. So if you have questions about it or uh, run into problems, there's a lot of solutions that people can offer. The kind of press I have that you've seen in the other videos is a, a dry mount press. There's uh, three brands that are pretty much the, the same things. There's Bianfang, um, BNG, or DNG, and uh, also Seal. And they make a model called the 210M, which is perfect for fitting about two books in there. You probably could put a little more, but it, it's a push to do two books at a time. Like I, I definitely wouldn't recommend that to uh, somebody starting out. But uh, for me that, you know, if, if I'm doing a bunch of moderns, uh, it, it really saves a lot of time in, in doing modern books. But most of the people on there will recommend getting just a second press if you're gonna do that. And the, the thing is that the press I got, I found locally from a photographer because they tend to be very expensive, but a photographer like locally was getting out of the business and I found him on uh, OfferUp and was able to get a great deal on, uh, on the press. So you can see here, I, I started, I decided to do a tedious process where I'm going line by line on all this text on the back cover and trying to clean up around it as much as possible. And I normally wouldn't do that on every, you know, I, I said, I'm going to know when to stop on this book, but with the amount of value potential there is just between a, a half a grade bump on this book, uh, I think it's worth taking the extra time to make sure that when it leaves my hands that it is the absolute best that it humanly could have been. I was saying, I don't know if it got cut off in one of the, the parts of the video that stopped recording for, for some reason, but uh, I always think it's interesting, you know, with these, uh, with these books that at the same time, they're basically the, the two different grades, right? So it's a joke that it's the Schrodinger's comic. You have the simultaneous existence of this book as a 4.0, which is what I purchased it as, and as a, uh, hopefully a five or somewhere around there. Uh, or maybe even higher at the same time. And there's a value difference and people will pay that value difference for getting a 4.0 to a 5.5. But uh, at the same time, it's the same book, right? Like if this went back on the market, somebody would pay a premium for the higher grade, even though in essence, it, it was a 4.0 at some time. But the, the thing is, is that it certainly, this process improves the, improves the book. I mean, it's gonna, present better, it's gonna look a, a whole lot better. A lot of those bends and creases are gonna be mitigated. It's not gonna have all the dirt on the back cover, all the soiling on the front cover. So there's definitely added value in that, you know, if people wanna to have a book that they can present and put up on a shelf someplace, then uh, this would be much better than the 4.0 version of it, right? After I'm done cleaning it and everything. Oh, there we go, here's some. It's just hard to clean this off once it gets uh, a lot of soiling on there. But it works really well. I wish I could figure out what that is right there. Here we go, here's a spot I wanted to get. This is still right here. So 
I was saying this is the perfect tool to do this kind of stuff. You can't get in here with a regular eraser. I've been thinking about putting together a kind of uh, advanced or premium cleaning kit. And if I did, this would probably be a tool that I would put in there. So if you guys are interested, let me know if that's something that would be worthwhile is to have a, a premium or advanced kit that maybe had a few more tools in it. I'm going to do a video at some point. I have a couple of videos lined up. It's just uh, finding the free time to, to put them together. But I have uh, one that I was planning on doing on just all the tools of the trade, everything that I have that I use to, to clean and press comics. And then uh, another one where it was kind of going to be a, a little bit of a, a parody thing, like what not to do with your, with your comic. And I'm going to take probably a modern, a uh, you know, dollar bin modern and a dollar bin uh, silver and show you how not to clean them and how not to press them. Because I think... Uh, it's a it's a good you know lesson, but also it could be done in a in a comical way. All right, so I am happy with how this looks right now. I'm gonna wipe it off one more time. Give that a shake. Be careful of that tear. Be careful of that tear. Like I said, the landmine comic over here. Looks good, but there's uh, a couple spots where you really could get into trouble with uh, with this. Uh, there's some. Let me see if I can get better over here. One of the things that happens is when you have a crease that happens or a crease that occurs in the book, uh, over time that crease is gonna get just, it's gonna be a, a place to catch ink and to catch dirt. And that dirt's gonna get stuck in there. And so that's what I was just cleaning out, just this uh, crease on there that because it was raised, it trapped a lot of dirt, like a mountain peak almost. Look at that from cleaning. Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna, I think, do one more, one more quick pass over with this. One more wipe down, and then we're gonna take a look at what this back cover looks like. And you wanna make sure, like when I go to press this, I always put new backing boards, like these These are gonna get thrown out. And then I put new backing boards, and you wanna make sure that none of the pencil eraser uh, shavings or any of that got trapped under the cover, because you don't wanna press those into the book. Okay, so let's, do a little bit of a close-up.
I'm really happy with how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this over. And get started on the on the front cover. Okay, here we go. So we just got done warming up, so to speak, on the back cover, but I think that took about an hour, if not longer, to, to go through that process. The front is going to be a little more challenging uh, just because uh, there's really no white areas on here. So uh, not really something that I can use. Definitely can't use this guy. So that's getting out of here. Maybe can use this. I'm going to go ahead and clean it off right here. All right. Probably can't use this. And we'll be mostly using this and just a cloth. I mean, it's, uh, I'll show you the areas we're gonna be able to do with the, with the uh, eraser. So I'm gonna start like I did on the back. Well, let's do this. Well, let's take a survey first. So I'm gonna gently pull back this page, okay? One of the things I do wanna note that is that some of these, uh, these bends, so there's like a, if I were to guess, I would say that is a paper clip. Looks like a big paper clip mark over there that goes through almost the whole book. And this uh, crease right there. In some cases, I may go page to page to go through and try to press those out. We'll see what happens after a first press. I really want to balance hands-on time. Yeah, see, it goes all the way through. I want to balance my hands on time with this book with really kind of like diminishing returns. So I want to make sure that staple stays in there. I don't want to mess with, um, don't want to mess with this. So tear here, the possibility of a tear here. So one, two, a couple chips, and then the stuff going on on the top there. So we're going to be very cautious around those. And I'm going to start, like I, as I said, I did with, uh, with just a wipe down, trying not to catch any of those areas. So we'll get, focus on here on this uh, white text. And that little box right there. Okay, so let's do the parts that we can do with the eraser. We're gonna break out this little guy again. Try to clean them off, even though it's kind of a pain. Who wishes comics were still 12 cents? I kind of don't. <laughs> Think about how many more comics. We'd have to buy another house just so we could house all those 12 cent comics in there. <laughs> all right, that's good.
All right, now let me see if I can do some of this lettering. It's an interesting time to be in uh, in comic collecting, huh? We have uh, MCU and all of these uh, series on Disney Plus and then on Amazon driving comic book sales like they've never been. You've never really had that before, right? I mean, I was a collector growing up in the 90s. We had Batman, right? I don't even remember when that came out, but it was probably in the late 90s. And that was about it, right? I mean, that was our superhero movie at the time. I'm sure that that drove up uh, Batman sales a little bit, or at least interest uh, around that time, but nothing like we have now, you know, people speculating on what books are going to go up in value based on characters that may or may not be in upcoming movies. Uh, and and just when I thought, like, you know, all the, all the hype and... Uh, value increases of a book would be seen before the movie came out. That's not what we've seen. We've kind of seen like the uh, a pre pre hype when there's a, a rumor of a character that may be in a in a movie or a TV show. Then there's like uh, another pop when we see confirmation that that character is going to be in it. Then we see like another one when the first images arise of of that character. In, in that movie. And then most recently, kind of with the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier stuff, there's even been uh, a more recent increase after that, too. I mean, we had uh, uh, the Falcon, first appearance of Falcon, that that kind of blew up, too, even after the, the, the first uh, show came out. So it's kind of like the, you know, the market kind of goes through those, those little peaks. And then I was expecting it to level up, but it just keeps going. And now it's just a, a crazy time to be collecting and kind of people are, are frustrated sometimes at the book they've been saving up for. Or, uh, they really wanted kind of spiked in value and is now like unachievable. But uh, I'll, I'll say that th I think there's a lot of opportunities out there for, for deals. You know, there's still deals to be had. There's still books that people aren't thinking about or going after right now that you could go after when everybody else is is focused on this other stuff. You just you can't be, you know, maybe one of those mainstream characters. Um, and then there's always the chance of getting a, a lower buy-in than, than what it's going to go to. Like, you know, this, this book right here has been spiking in value because of the Loki series and, and uh, the, the new Thor movie and everything coming out. So that you have that, but then on top of that, I, I'm not, uh, I don't think that this book is ever going to go down in value unless uh, something significant happens to the market. So you have the upcoming show, which is going to drive the value higher. People coming into it and really liking maybe the, the character of Loki, and then maybe a larger role for him in the, in the MCU based off of this movie. So if you're into the speculating or investment side of things. And I think, you know, that that is part of it. I mean, part of comic books is, is collecting them, not just to, to have them sit around. I mean, people enjoy the stories, people enjoy the art, uh, but you also have that collectability, right? So uh, my friend, uh, Ryan, Ryan Comic Guy, which you should go check out his channel and subscribe if you don't. He does a lot of uh, videos like that, talking about the industry and, and uh, the market, comic book market. But one of the things that he's described is what he's, he says is the three pillars of, of uh, comic books, which is, you know, the art, the story, and the, the collectability of it. And so you, uh, you have to have all three of those to really uh, have what we have right now, right? So if it's just the art, then you're in a different space. That's like 
uh, fine art or something, right? If it's just a story, then it's a it's a novel or some other media. Uh, but and then if it's uh, you know just the the story and art, then that's probably a picture book, right? And you don't have the the collectability aspect of it. So with this, you pretty much have uh, all three of those. And it, the, when they all kind of come together is when you get really valuable books. And I think that's what you see with some silvers right now. It's like these are just uh, these are huge books. You know they had great stories. They had uh, great art. This art is phenomenal here. And they have uh, the collectability aspect of it. You know, nobody's they're not finding new copies necessarily with this. Okay, so I just did kind of all the white areas that I can. I'm going to test this on this area right here. So there's this little text box. Uh, and I'm going to secure the page around it. And I'm just going to see how this does working on that spot lightly. Double check where my... All right, I should have done a before and after video capture of that because that was pretty amazing. It's uh, really easy to see how well this uh, this works when you have some a spot that that's dirty. So a lot just came off. Oh, I, I see. I forgot I had another white spot I was going to try to do. It's really minor, but when you have the ability to use maybe a better tool or a broader tool, why not take it? Okay, wipe that off. All right, so this is working really well. I'm gonna continue doing, here, let's show you guys this one. So let's see, see the text right there. You can kind of see the grime around it. Um, let me do that real quick and then you can see. I'll probably go over that again, but look at that. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I am going to use this and start at the bottom and work my way this way, go all the way to the top like I did the back cover. And again, good pressure down here. You don't want the, bo the book to slide around, being very cautious around the edges and around these areas where we have tears, especially right here. So what I'm going to do right there, I'm going to turn this so that it covers the tear, secures that in place. I'm going to clean that area and then I'm going to move on.
There's some kind of mark right there, but I don't know what that is. I don't think it's... It almost looks like pencil or something, but I don't see any indentations. The reason I started on the back cover, because it looked a little more secure, a little easier, more straightforward. And I wanted to stare at the back cover so that I forgot the value of this book. <laughs> As I said, when you go into it, you kind of have to pretend like it's uh, just any other book. And you can't really do that staring at the, the front cover. So I wanted to and I wanted to look at the back, which looks like the back of any other Silver Age book during this era. And forget about what book I'm working on. And, I, and then now you can see I, I, um, I feel like I'm more confident in my strokes. Clean that off again. So just cut off the, the edge again. Give me a new one to work on. But one of the areas of this book I wanted to focus on was these wings, right? And this hair, make that hair golden again. Because it, again, there's these, these places on this cover where people are, eyes are drawn. And, and I, you know, I just assume, you know, um, you know, grading is supposed to be relatively subjective or, or objective. Uh, you you kind of can put bias in there. So, or, or maybe not necessarily bias, but the view, the grader's process for judging whether this, the cover is soiled, for example, is to probably do what I do. Look at the white parts of the, of the uh, cover. Look at the lettering on the trade dress. Look at other parts, maybe secondly. So if the, the white is clean and the, the text on the trade dress is clean, then I have a notion that the book itself uh, gets does better overall. So that's why I like to focus on those areas. I feel like they're the most important. Secondly, one of the other things is I, I have this notion that I think that the page color is biased based on the, the cover. So you'll see a lot of books get regraded and their page color changes. And you have to ask yourself, like, how does that happen? Right? Like nothing changed. If anything, you would think that it would it would get worse, right? And a lot of times it gets improved. And most of those books are ones that have been cleaned. So I have this uh, theory, it was just some kind of uh, internal bias where when you see the exterior cover look good and you see the colors on the, the cover look good, then if you're using a key to judge the, the page color, you know, there's like a little, I forget the name of it, but there's a, a little uh, card that you can buy to look at what page color is. So if they're using one of those cards, to then assess the, the page color, and it's between two colors, let's say, I feel like if the overall quality of the book is look, looking good, you will be internally biased to then give it the higher, the higher value or the better, better page color. Um, again, that's, that's all just conjecture, you know? But it makes sense to me. It makes sense. My, my scientific background and perspective is uh, I've, I've thought a lot about uh, these biases and, and especially things with like surveys. So if you guys have ever completed a survey, there's a lot that goes into putting those surveys together on how the questions are asked and asking a question in a certain way can introduce bias. And then the same with, with rating things. So if, if you have something that is, is supposed to be objective, but has subjective components, like grading a comic book, then some of the things that you want to look at is, is inter and intra rater reliability. So basically, the grader, the same grader grading the same book on five separate occasions, what value would they assign it? So that variation would be the intra rater uh, reliability or uh, accuracy. So if that always stays a five, then that person has a high level of intra-rater reliability. 
inter-grader reliability would be if you gave this book to five different graders and saw how they graded it. And if they graded it all the same grade, then you have high inter-grader reliability. And so what we hope, oh, well, I hope, I, we don't know much about what CGC's internal QC is, but I would hope, and if I were in charge, that there were th things in place to measure that on occasion, especially when you get uh, new graders in there. So you might have a test book that you send to all the graders and see what it gets graded. Or you send the same book to the same grader multiple times and see what it gets graded. And then you have some empirical data where you can assess how well your, your grade accuracy is. And, and I'm almost certain, again, they, they don't talk about this, but I'm al almost certain that they do do that internally, especially during trainings and stuff. Um, it's just that's not something they, they probably share. But I'd like to think that they try to keep that as, as high as possible. Uh, and if, if there's uh, instances where you have a, a single grader grading things differently, whether that be higher or lower than the other graders, or if you have a grader that's grading the same book, different values every time they see it, then that's probably, like any other job, an opportunity to do an in-service and train that person and figure out what's going on, why they, you know, why they thought that it was a different grade every time they viewed it. And now it's possible that there could be some inherent uh, variation in that, like maybe the book got some additional bends in, in between all the handling that it gets passed around or something like that. But for the most part, the accuracy should be there. It should be getting the same grade every time. doesn't matter if it goes to the same grader five times or to five different graders. They should all be giving it essentially the, the same grade. And so those are things that can be measured, things that I think are measured, and then they can, uh, they can uh, assess it internally and make corrections when needed. All right, how do you guys think we're doing here? I'm thinking this looks good. It was hard because this light area, I mean, be very gentle. There's a couple little chip right there. I'm thinking that these light areas were really hard Really easy to get dirty and hard to clean because they're not white. They're, they're this light blue, I think, if everybody agrees that that's some kind of blue color. All right, so I kind of went all the way up. I don't want to spend too much time on this lettering because uh, I don't want to wash out the colors. The lettering is really important. I feel like that that's another area. The more that that color pops, the better. And it's already, this one's a little dull. I, I'm sure that was a lot brighter when it was first uh, printed, right? The greens and yellows look really good, but I think it's this, um, it probably had some rub over here, like based on this uh, corner crease. Like this whole thing was folded over at some point. It really stinks. Granted, if those weren't there, I probably couldn't have afforded to get this book. <laughs> so when I was picking this up, I noticed that it was really dirty around Loki. And since he's a centerpiece of this uh, image, I feel like it's important to really spend that time around the around him. Yeah, I mean, your, your eye immediately goes here and then to Thor. So does it sound like I overanalyze this? That's why I have the name Epicomicology because uh, I'm a very technical person in general, in my uh, day job and in my life, and that extends into comic collecting. I don't think I'm OCD, but I think I think of things maybe a little differently. So I'm gonna go back down this a little bit.
at Thor's golden locks and his wings from a different angle. Okay, I think I'm going to pause right here, walk away from it, and then come back and see what I think. Because I'm feeling good about this, uh, this front cover right here. At the most, I might go over these areas again, but I don't think so because I don't... Like I said, it's a very busy cover, lots of colors really don't want to uh, dull them out and I think a lot a lot of it's been pretty well addressed I was mostly concerned about these text boxes the soiling I saw around Loki the lettering over here and uh, all of that looks uh, a lot better okay so we will pause there and uh, I'm going to walk away and come back, and then we're going to get into uh, pressing the book. All right. See you soon. Okay. I walked away, came back, did a little bit more touch-up, but I'm pretty much done. So it's about ready time to go in the humidification chamber and then into the press. We'll give it a little bit of a once-over. So I've placed a backer board at the center fold. It's sitting on a fresh backer board. I have my 65 pound card stock set aside for after the humidification. But the next time you see it, it's gonna be in the sauna. Be back shortly. Okay, so I have it in the humidity tank. It is misting and it'll be in there for two and a half minutes each side. You can see it's uh, getting quite steamy in there. And what that's going to do is that's going to really let the paper get a little more malleable, uh, make it more receptive to the press and hold the, the press uh, longer. So we're going to let that go in there for a little over two minutes. And in the meantime, I have my press uh, heating up. So you can see it slightly climbing right now. And as I said, this is a Bienfang Masterpiece 210M. Very similar other dry mount presses in there. And I have all my other pressing supplies right here. So to give you an idea, in this press, I have um, two steel sheets. The comic gets placed on top of this board uh, when it's uh, ready to get pressed. But I'll come back to that when we uh, get it out of the humidification tank and get it ready to press. Okay, so it's been five minutes since we put it in here. And I just want to give you an idea of what this should look like uh, when you pull it out of the humidity tank. So you'll see that the pages are kind of curled up a little bit. 
after uh, having that humidification, that's exactly what you want to see. So we're going to go ahead and build our finish building our stack, 65-pound uh, card stack on the front and back cover, and that's going to go into the press. Okay, I got my little guy recording me, so he's going to help. So I built my stack, 65-pound card stock on the front and back cover. The press is at temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and lay, lay down a backer board, magazine size backer board. And then on that is going to go a piece of SRP paper. The book, the entire stack is going to go on top of that. So you're going to make sure that it's nice and centered in there. And that the... No, you're still recording, right? Yeah, you're still recording. Okay, so you're going to make sure it's nice and centered. And then you're going to go ahead and put another piece of SRP paper on top. Okay, and then the magazine backer board goes on top of that. That's our stack. And then we're going to go ahead and close this gently. And now do I do it? Now? And it's ready to go. So we'll uh, let this run for 15 minutes, turn it off, and then we're going to flip over and do it again. All right, let's have a first look at what this uh, pressing resulted in. Uh, I flipped it, so I, I pressed it 15 minutes at about 155 on my dry mount press. Left it there for 12 hours. I flipped it and repeated the process on the back side, uh, 12 hours. Actually, I left it for 24 hours, but uh, same thing, 15 minutes at 155. And now I pulled it out. Excuse the bizarre lighting. I have uh, the morning light shining in through my dining room window, which is where I have this set up. So we can make a fun little animals uh, over here. But let's take a look at how this turned out. So you can see my stack, my uh, cardboard backing board, my SRP paper underneath. And how does it look? A lot better. So let's take, I'm going to take this out too. All right, well, I, as I anticipated, those dents are going to be a little harder to pull out, but a lot of those bends have been significantly mitigated. Um, you can see, there you go, you can see that bend right there. So I, I had anticipated that I have the tack iron out. I think I can take care of that, and I think this back cover still needs one more press anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, work on that, and then let's flip it over and take a look at the front cover and see how it turned out. All right. Front cover looks really good too. I noticed this when I flipped it, that right edge is just like uh, curling up a little bit. And I think that's because of that crease that's right there, but a lot better. Uh, looks like the staple's still intact. So that's, uh, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And so one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace all the stacking layers when I go ahead and, and press this again. So I'm just going to open this up, take the old one out, and that one. So that's every that's something you want to do every time you change the, every time you flip it or, or redo the press. As you can imagine, after you um, after you press it, the indentations from anything like dents or, or anything of that nature, especially or staples or something, are now in the paper that you use. You actually see. All right, so as I was saying, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to have this impression pressed onto to the book. So that's why you don't reuse uh, pressing materials. And it's been costed out. It's, it works out to like a dollar, a dollar fifty a book. So what you're, especially when you're dealing, well, it, it, any book, I should say, if you're pressing it, it's worth the, the investment. Because if not, it's not worth your time. So don't reuse stacking material. That's just uh, one of the, the cardinal... Uh, I don't know what you want to say. Commandments of comic book pressing. All right. So this this cover looks good. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, and then I'm going to plug in. Hold on one second. Just make sure I got all this 
secure. All right. So I'm going to plug in my uh, my trusty uh, little tack iron or heat sealing iron as it's called, and I'm going to locate those areas. So there's the two dents right there, which are thankfully in an area of the page that's uh, easy to to, to uh, address. I'm going to go ahead. So you want to, when you do this, you want SRP paper on front and back side. So I'm going to fold this piece in half. I'm going to put this back aboard down here. I'm going to gently fold this side of the page over and I can see where those dents are. One right there. Let me spot that other one too. Where'd that other one go? Oh, right there. Okay. So here and here. I'm going to go ahead and use this to sandwich that, that page. All right. So now we have a good working area. You can see I'm trying to make sure that we're not putting a lot of stress on this uh, on the cover. And I'm going to set this guy to a temperature of around 2.5. I would not go over 3 ever on one of these. And if you ever buy one of these, uh, when you use it the first couple times, it's going to smoke. That's just, uh, just how it is. So don't freak out. So the method I'm using here is called the Hot Shots method. Uh, it requires a little localized moisture, so I just put a little distilled water on a Q-tip. I'm going to dab that on that area, and then I'm going to use this uh, stainless steel ball bearing to uh, massage that area. Now remember, this is probably something that's been there for like 40, 50 years, right? So it's going to take a little bit to maybe work it out. And I, I'm going to you know, go with our mantra on this book of uh, less is more, so I'm really going to just... Uh, not not work on this way too much just work on it a little bit so a little dab some moisture over there and i'm just going to press down with the sealing iron you don't want to hold it in place for a long time just a couple dabs all right now i'm going to take this ball just massage, run it along that area and massage it. And I'm just using, you know, medium pressure, I'll say, and just going in little circular motions over that area. Let me see where that is, right there, okay. And right there. So in terms of the overall grade of this book, I don't know if these uh, defects are going to be major, but this is something I know I can address. So I figured why not, why not do it? You know, I can already tell it's a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe dab a little bit more on there. And I'm not moving this, I'm just pressing it down. You don't want to do circular motions with the heat because you can cause damage to the, to the paper.
So it's, I think best, you can do this from both sides of the paper. This process works for indentations from anything really. Uh, probably the most prevalent in comics is some kind of, uh, uh, somebody like tracing over a cover. And so you have some pencil or, or uh, writing impressions. So this can work really well for that. All right, I think this, this last guy really did it. Gave it a little more extra pressure. Stepped it up a little bit. Okay, now that looks a lot better. Let me see if I can get, get it to you in the light. That's a lot better. Give this guy one more press and I think that'll be good. Let's flip this over and see if there's anything that we can we can do on the other side. I don't think so, but I do think that this one needs one more press. So Let's see if I can catch, there we go, there's, so it, it flattened out a lot. There. Look, you see that? So that I think needs, um, needs one more press. And the same with the bottom. Actually, you know what, remember that, that mark on the bottom? I'm going to do that area too. Okay, so this one we're gonna get a little creative with because I can show you how I deal with this. So you see, you know that I'm concerned about that staple. What I'm gonna do, you can see how I construct this. So first of all, I'm gonna set this up where I want it. I'm gonna use this. I'm going to put this SRP paper down right here. Put this in the center. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to prop that up. Oh wait, I want to add one more, one more. Sorry, hold on guys. I don't want that resting on the... Okay, so now we don't have that same pressure that we did on the on that staple, right? Because if I like had folded it over, it would have um, had a lot more uh, stress on that staple as I'm doing this process and I want to protect that, that the cover as much as possible. So I'm going to set this up right here. This is what I'm trying to address. Let's see, that's really got kind of good light. Just happens to be, you know, where we need it right there. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and do this process on this area. So I'm going to do some, a little bit of, Dabbing a little bit right there. So when you do this, you always want SRP paper on the top and on the bottom. 
to protect the, the paper. And then I don't do it on my cutting. Uh, so I have this like cut seal, self sealing cutting board underneath, which has a bunch of scores in it. So I never work directly on that surface. I always have uh, something under it. And usually that's either a magazine backer board or a couple magazine backer boards, a couple of sheets of uh, 65 pound uh, cardstock. Okay, that's, man, that's a nasty one, huh? All right, I'm glad I flipped it over to work on this. This is a hard one. If you remember, I showed this to you was like, you know, a few pages deep. So now I'm in the dilemma of trying to figure out if I should do just this page or maybe one more, one more page. It's, uh, it's improving quite a bit. So I'm going to give it a little more. Just rub it for a little, for a little more. It goes all the way up here. And basically what you're doing here is just massaging those fibers with the with the ball trying to trying to get them to loosen up a little bit the um, little moisture helps with that and then using the heat to try to press that down and then all of this gets pressed again to hopefully fix a lot of that now i remember there's some i don't know if i could see them on here Let me go ahead and Press this corner just a little bit. All right, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to flip this page. I made the decision I'm going to do. I'm going to do that page. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to do that. So now I put another sheet of cardstock underneath, or I'm sorry, a backer board, another backer board underneath to protect the work I just did. And then that's Okay, so that I think is going to do it. Let me go ahead and take these out, put them in my discard pile. Now 
Get that guy out of the way. And I'm going to put my so a fresh sheet of SRP paper, making sure this is clean. Or I'm sorry, fresh sheet of backer board. These guys are all going to get discarded. This one already has its front sheet. Hold on one guy. build this stack so under the front cover one sheet flip it over one sheet under the back cover and now I'm going to repeat the press process so we'll uh, check on it after the final press everyone well my journey to the mystery 85 came back from CGC uh, I never have the patience to wait and see the grade so I already know what's uh, contained in here but let's get into this and see what is inside and then we will talk about it a little bit all right Lots of reusable bubble wrap in here. Let's get into this guy. Okay, let me pre-peek so we have the right side. All right, there we go. So after sending, uh, after cleaning, pressing that 4.0 and resubmitting it, we received it back uh, from CGC in a fresh case. And the final grade is a 4.0. So I've had a little bit of time to, to come to reconcile with, uh, with this, but in the end, it's just part of the, part of the hobby, part of the sport. Uh, sometimes you're flush, sometimes you're bust, and sometimes with these investments, you uh, end up not being able to uh, change the, the defects that actually was scored at that grade in the first place. And so despite us improving significantly the presentation of the book, I mean, it looks phenomenal in here. Uh, the back cover is so much cleaner, a lot more. I mean, there's there's just nine day difference. You'll see the before and after pictures when it's done. But uh, I guess so some of these things in here weren't able to be fixed. There's uh, a couple tears. I mean, there was tears here. These creases and the edge wear, some of the creases to the cover. This uh, stain or or yellowing, whatever that is, uh, to the to the back cover. And some of these other defects, uh, you know, there's another tear right here that, that, of course, you can't rectify those. But, you know, we did our best. It's in a brand new case. Uh, I'm lucky in the fact that the timing worked out, so it's still an overall win in terms of the, the value of the book. But uh, I'm really loving this new label. 
loving the case and you know not not to be discouraged like i said sometimes you you win some sometimes you lose some and in this case uh we we broke even but again with uh with the timing change the the last night was the the first episode of loki so the the timing worked out that this book is still on the upswing in value it would have been nice to get this back as a four five or a five oh but uh, i'll take my wins where i can get them so uh join us next time we'll go through uh, some more results and again, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy with it because it looks really great. It looks a lot better than it was. I really like the new cases. This one looks really nice encapsulated like that. So we'll, uh, we'll try again and uh, we'll enjoy this one and its beauty and, and hope the show uh, ends up living up to all of its promises. So until next time.